Okay, so there's a leaked image going around that came from a UK store called Argos. And in this brochure, it shows that there are two Mavics that are coming out, a Mavic Pro 2 and a Mavic Zoom, what? Then another image came today from the German DJI website itself. So it looks like it's real. And now there's more leaked photos with these attachments that go on top of the drone. So we'll talk about those a little bit later. Turns out we have two, the Zoom version, which looks smaller, and we'll have a 24 to 48 millimeter zoomable lens, but the same one in 2.3 inch sensor that the current Mavic has. And what I can't believe is that the Mavic Pro 2 will have a full one inch sensor. Wow. What does that mean? This has always been my only problem with the Mavic. This piddly little thing is the sensor in the Mavic Pro right now. And then this is the full one inch sensor that's in the Phantom 4 Pro and why it's so much better at dealing with shadows and really bright spots and why I can see so much better in low light. It's not make or break for photo or video, but it definitely gives you a big leg up, especially in low light. The average person won't notice a strong enough difference in the video in broad daylight, but when it comes to low light, the Mavic just can't compete. If you've taken the photo course or the video course, you always, always hear me say, don't use any ISO if you're doing anything with the Mavic. And it's because the current model has that one in 2.3 inch sensor. Even just the sensitivity to light aside, having usable ISO like this is going to be a really, really big improvement. And by the way, this is basically like a flying iPhone. I mean, it's barely bigger than the iPhone 7 sensor. Not that you can't find a way to make it work. Most of my photos are taken on the Mavic Pro just because it's the most fun to use and it's the one I usually have with me. But here's a side by side of what you can expect with the one inch sensor from my Phantom and my Mavic. First, we're gonna look at raw photos that are straight from the camera with no editing. With the Mavic, I had to shoot with the shutter all the way down to 1 13th of a second to get an ample amount of light. With the one inch sensor in the Phantom, I only had to shoot at 1 160th of a shutter, which in most cases, this would be a way sharper image, but the gimbals are so good on both of these drones that since I'm holding still, you can't see the difference very well. But when I went back and did 1 160th of a shutter with the Mavic, it just came out so much darker. This is a make or break for photography because the Mavic still does really well when you slow the shutter down a little bit more. So I'm going to shoot some HDR and process these photos in Lightroom to show you something you might actually wind up with in the end after you do all the editing. So if you know what you're doing, you can clean it up either way because I don't know if you can really tell the difference between both of these photos. This one is the Mavic and then this one is the Phantom. They both wind up pretty similar and both usable. I did have to spend more time cleaning up some of the grain on the Mavic photo, so this might be an exaggeration, and it was much easier to edit the photos from the Phantom 4 Pro, but this changes when we go a little bit darker, because even after Lightroom, you can tell the difference between how well the Phantom 4 Pro picks up very, very little light compared to the Mavic. I love the Mavic, I just hated that it didn't have this sensor so you couldn't pick up light as well at nighttime. So if it does get this one inch sensor, I'll be really, really, really happy, and I can't believe they did it. So if it's like the one the Phantom has right now, you'll see a juicy improvement in dynamic range, which is being able to see the very, very bright brights and very dark spots together at once. And that is very crucial in lighting extremes like shooting in broad daylight where you have shadows under trees. And you'll see a strong improvement to low light, maybe even usable ISO. And I find it really interesting that that tiny sensor that's in the current Mavic is gonna stay in the zoom model. So I guess it's just for people who really want that zoom ability, the little bit of zoom it gives you. The current Mavic has a 26 millimeter lens and the zoom is gonna have a 24 to 48 millimeter. We might see some other minor updates with this Mavic zoom, but it basically looks like it's gonna be the same Mavic as now, kind of, to cover that corner of the market, I guess. But why would they trump their own best performing model currently by putting its best feature, the one inch sensor, into the new Mavic. The Mavic Pro already covers 22% of the entire drone market, which is just unbelievable. So I think they realize people love the build and the function of it, and they don't wanna to have to deal with the small trade in quality to get a giant annoying tank they have to carry around with a huge remote, which is the Phantom, which is why I leave it at home most of the time. It brings so much attention to you, it's annoying to deal with, it summons every dad within 500 yards to come running over and ask you the same questions. How high does it go? How far does it go? I still don't think this is the end of the Phantoms because a while ago I saw a pretty low quality image leaked from some site from who knows where that shows what looks like a Phantom 5 with interchangeable lenses. If they gave us interchangeable lenses on the Phantom 5, I would buy it over the new Mavic. So DJI is aware they cripple the Phantom interest by putting its big powerful sensor in the new Mavic, but they've more than likely got other stuff up their sleeve. Maybe the Phantom 5 will be able to fly for 40 minutes. Maybe they'll get rid of that goofy giant controller. Maybe it'll make me a cup of ramen noodle. I don't know. We'll have to see. Then there are these leaked images that just came out today, and I saw this article on DroningOn.com. They're speculating that maybe some of these, what looks like attachable head units, might be for infrared or it might be a strobe so that 
you can fly low light. Now the FAA has changed regulations to say that you need brighter lights that can be seen up to three miles if you want to fly after sunset. Then there's this other weird alien attachment, which could be like ultrasonic radar or something, which could be good for farming or seeing in the dark or sensing structures without needing light. And that would be great for professional uses like construction and land surveillance and building development. Even aside from all these weird attachments, just with the sensor in the Mavic Pro now, I've done almost all my shooting with it. So I'm totally fine with its quality. And the one inch sensor just really solidifies the only concern I had with it. If it can do 4K at 60 frames a second as well, I'll be in heaven. And what a year for buying drones it's gonna be if we get an, a Phantom with interchangeable lenses and this new Mavic with a one inch sensor. So if you wanna see the raw footage I'm working with here side by side and the raw photos to download and you can edit them yourself, you can check out the link below. Also, if you're interested in the photo course, I've linked that below as well, where I show you how to do all this stuff that I did and that'll help if you're dealing with a Mavic in low light and doing photography. My name is Alex Harris from Drone Launch Academy. Hopefully next time you guys see me, I'm gonna have this new Mavic.